Back outside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined by Ryan Hannibal, Patriots writer for WEEI.com. An eventful and very pleasant, as you can tell by the weather outside, day number six of Patriots camp. Patriots after shorts and shells inside the stadium on Monday night. We're back in full pads here on Wednesday morning outside Gillette. Uh, sunny day, temperatures in the mid-70s to start, reached into the 80s. And Ryan, uh, there were a couple of highlights of, of camp uh, practice today, one of which would be the return of Alan Branch, who started out in shorts, it appeared, and then turned into full pads midway through the practice. Yeah, that was a good sign to see him back on the field. It's kind of similar to what he's done over the last couple of years where he sort of goes at his own pace. And him being the lead for eight or nine years, he's going to be in football shape when he's back on the field. So obviously a good sign to get him back on the field because I think he's one of the guys that could lead the defensive line unit. So I think anytime you get a veteran guy back on the field, it's a good sign. There was a lot of... Um obviously drills towards the goal line in the red area, testing out the run game. I found that particularly interesting today. LeGarrette Blunt looked very good. I had the chance to ask Jimmy Garoppolo after practice about, there's so much focus, Ryan, on the run on the passing game what about the run game and he says the offensive line is coming together very well and it looked like it today in the goal line offense when LeGarrette Blunt ran it in twice yeah I think that's been a big focus not only today but going back to the the last weekend that's been really what the offense is working on is the offensive line sort of gelling together and blogging they've really focused a lot on the running game I think the majority of the plays that have been run seven on seven and eleven on eleven have been running plays so I think that's sort of where they're starting I, I guess that's how you would want to start every offense so starting with the run game and then go out from there. So I think, to the Garoppolo's point, that's been a big focus, and I think it's looked pretty good. And uh, you remember a couple of years ago when the Patriots started 2-2 two and two and there was a lot of concern about uh, the run game, and I talked about this uh, in my wrote about this in my column on WEEI.com. It started with the attitude in week number five against the Bengals. The offensive line found the attitude. Looks like that's what they're trying to develop early on here in camp. You had a point to make about the Patriots quarterbacks. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are watching Jimmy Garoppolo and Tom Brady very closely. Your point about uh, the quarterbacks and the receivers they're throwing to. Yeah, I mean, they've sort of mixed and matched. Well, granted, they've split the reps. I mean, some people might say Garoppolo had a bad day of practice or Brady had a bad day of practice, but you really have to consider who they're throwing to. I mean, when, when a quarterback's throwing to the likes of Martellus Bennett and Rob Ronkowski, obviously they're going to look a lot better than throwing to, say, you know, Devin Lucian or, uh, I don't know, uh, Chris Harper. Right. So there's going to be a big difference there. I think fans might jump to the conclusion that maybe Brady's numbers were bad one day compared to the next day, but you really have to factor in who they're throwing to. I mean, example, down on the goal line today, Brady had a drill where he he had, I think, two straight incompletions and was scrambling a lot in those plays, but you look at who was out there, there was no Rob Gronkowski, there was no Martellus Bennett, it was you know Devin Lucian and, and a lot of third, third and, and fourth stringers, so you really have to factor that in. I think that's something that's maybe a little bit under the radar today when you're looking at strictly the numbers. I think you have, really have to factor in who you're throwing to. All right. Um Obviously, with the Patriots uh, focusing on the pass game, there's going to be a lot of focus, like you mentioned, on the wide receivers. And uh, DeAndre Carter is somebody that I think really, really sticks out to in terms of uh, a guy, maybe a long shot, who can make this team. And, uh, you know, he is a, a, a young receiver out of Sacramento State, had 99 catches in his senior year, made a lot of national headlines. Uh, but there's Chris Harper, as you mentioned, and Malcolm Mitchell. And... In terms of Carter, what he said was, you know, when Bill Belichick today compared him to Troy Brown, he takes that as the best compliment he could possibly pay him because of the size, five foot eight, but the work ethic Troy Brown put into it, maybe, you know, Carter can uh, land in that same type of role. Yeah, like you mentioned, all those players, but Bill in his conference, I think yesterday or, or Monday with Sirius XM Radio said that it's the most competitive wide receiver right. spot that he's had since his time in New England. And I think that speaks to guys like you mentioned, DeAndre Carter, Chris Harper, Malcolm Mitchell. Those are, are guys that are fighting for that last spot. And I think we saw last year with Chris Harper, I think he really emerged during training camp like those guys want to do. So I think those younger guys, like you mentioned, leading with, with Carter, you know, want to come as far as Chris Harper did last year. And I think it's confidence that goes to them that shows that a guy like Chris Harper, you know, undrafted last year, can make a team. So I think, like you, like you said, with all these injuries to the receivers not being on the field, it's time for those guys to shine and make the most of their opportunities. And I think guys like Aaron Dobson, Chris Harper, 
Jaron Drake Carter, all those guys have done everything they can so far. So I think when he get, when he gets a compliment like that, it just shows that he's you know doing what he can on the field to, to make the most of his of his time. Another very good day, I thought, Ryan. Maybe you agree uh, for Aaron Dobson. He has got a lot to show. There's no question about it coming into his third season. He has got to show that he is the guy that could be a deep threat. He has shown glimpses of it, but will he show it on a consistent basis? All right, enough of the X's and O's on the field. There was plenty of personality after practice today. We'll start first with Martellus Bennett. He said it was a tough practice for him. He kept coughing on reporters, sweating on reporters who were crowding around him uh, right uh, over there on the sideline on the fence. And then he was asked about Rob Gronkowski. He looks into the microphone and he says, well, he's pretty effing good. And I cleaned it up. That's not what he said on film. And he laughed. And, you know, the, the point of the matter is Martellus Bennett is a personality here who is showing his true colors early on. He is who he is. And obviously the Patriots signed off on this type of personality coming into their locker room. Yeah, we've, it's only been, what, less, just over a week of training camp, and you already have quotes from Martellus Bennett to full, you know, two pages in a notebook, and you really, we rarely go a whole That's Patriots. never a bad thing, Ryan, let no, me no, tell no, you. I'm just saying you go a whole Patriots season without being able to do that. So, right. so Martellus Bennett, he's, he's been a funny guy, and that's, that transfers over from when he brought over from Chicago. And I think, like you said, the Patriots sort of sign up for that. They know what they're going to get from him. And he's produced on the field, too. Him and Rob Gronkowski have been probably the two best receivers here in training camp catching, you know, we haven't seen it today, but over the weekend they were catching red zone passes left and right. So I think they're sort of the, the twin towers, I guess you want to say, and they could really, you know, have a huge impact on the field come week one, especially in the goal line area, in the red area, because they're a nightmare for defenses. Ebony and Ivory or Beans and Rice, as uh, Bennett called the combo. There, he said he was asked whether or not there's been a nickname for Gronk and Bennett that uh, has stuck so far, and he said not really, but we're thinking about it. Beans and Rice is the one he threw out there today. All right, Terrence Knighton, huge Celtics fan, grew up in Hartford. He had a conversation with Kevin Durant. You were in on that scrum with Terrence Knighton. What gives? Yeah, Knighton said that he actually talked to Durant after he met with Brady in the Celtics brass, and he sort of pleaded with him not to sign with Golden State, but obviously he did, and Knighton actually said that he, he thinks the Celtics are going to get him back when Golden State comes to town, and that just goes along with what a big fan Knighton is of the Celtics. And It's good to see the, the football guys rooting for other teams in Boston, and that goes with all sports. I think that just, it just shows, you know, the camaraderie between the two teams and just how much Knighton is a big Celtics fan growing up in Hartford, like you mentioned. Well, a jam-packed day number six on Tuesday here, or on Wednesday, I forgot what day it was, at Gillette Stadium. It's easy to do that when these camp days uh, meld together, Ryan. Um, but uh, we'll be back at it again here on uh, Thursday, uh, morning practice will be moved back to its more typical time of 9.15. At least that is the ex expectation. It was a little later today as the players had the day off on Tuesday. We'll have all of the coverage on WEEI.com, the It Is What It Is blog. Christopher Price, Ryan Hannibal, and yours truly, Mike Petralia, bringing you all of the coverage outside Gillette Stadium on a beautiful Wednesday. I'm Mike Petralia. He's Ryan Hannibal, WEEI.com.